So you think this is an ice hockey nation? Well, yes and no. Czech Republic is also about football. The Czech team became World Cup runners-up twice. Their biggest success was in 1976 when they won the Euros. And in 1996 they reached the final again. They produced stars such as Nedvěd, Rosicky, Barosz, Schmitzer, to name a few. And they qualified for Euro 2020 again, for the seventh time in a row. This has only been achieved by a few other nations. But Czechs are not precisely ecstatic about their team. There's been a bit of a fallout uh, with the public uh, when it comes to the national team. Není tam v naší v naší hře momentálně není určitě ten rozdílový hráč. New generation is uh, is good, but the last generation was better. What has happened? Has Czech football fallen from grace, or is it a sleeping giant? I went all across Czech Republic to find out. Let's start in Prague, the golden city, one of Europe's gems. Everybody loves it. Not just tourists on the world-famous Charles Bridge. It has lately also been popular with Italian football fans. Because Inter played here in the Champions League against Slavia Prague. The stadium was sold out, which is not always the case when the national team play. I mean, we didn't even sell out uh, the game of, uh, with England, which really wouldn't happen uh, a while back. Football blogger Thomas Danicek says the current lack of euphoria has been growing for over a decade. So basically once all the Kollers and Baroshes and um, Nedvets aged out, uh, there was just no one to lean on, there was no one who would be coming through. So there was a gap, like a real gap afterwards, after 2008. Pavel Nedved was their superstar and key to Czech Republic's success in the past. In 2004, Czech Republic had the potential to win it then. But the Great Greek Wall was stronger and snatched the title. Three years ago they set up regional academies. Those are now really focused on developing a crop of players that, that will be consistently able to deliver uh, results. And the man in charge of these youth academies is not quite a stranger. Do you remember Karel Poborski? Of course you do. Who could forget this hair? And he played with flair and elegance not many had. And this is Poborski today. What a makeover. He looks like a hip movie director rescripting Czech football. Vždy nám vlastně po té mojí generaci nám trošičku ujel vlák a snažíme se to tímto dohnat. Ten koncept je vlastně až 14 regionálních akademií řízenou svazem centrálně, tak aby jsme znova český fotbal dostali do absolutní špičky a tohle je velice důležitý krok. Like Belgium or Germany in the past, Czech Republic wants to get back on track by professionalizing youth football. They want to create a new golden generation like here in the western city of Pilsen. The local club Victoria used to be a Champions League participant. It is the home of former stars such as Petr Čech and of today's international such as Vladimir Darida. The academy scout young talents all over the country. Their education does not stop on the football pitch. Coaches, psychologists and physiotherapists take care of the kids. They have to wake up at 6 in the morning. They have to be good at school. They like literally can't see their families for five days in a week and they are still 13, 14. So they really have to like it to kind of survive here in the system. For now though, Czech football fans still have to dwell in the past. At the decisive qualifier against Kosovo and Pilsen, it's nostalgia for the good old days and players like Tomáš Rozicky. Není tam v naší v naší hře momentálně není určitě ten rozdílový hráč, jakým byl třeba on, nebo takhle je tam je tam je tam je tam spousta šikovných hráčů, ale není tam není tam takový ten opravdu s tou myšlenkou rozdílovou, který by opravdu tak nějak rozdělil no, tu hru. 
Czech Republic won against Kosovo and qualified for the Euro 2020. But we've already seen wilder football parties. It felt more like people were relieved. After the game, only a few celebrated in style. Their confidence ran high, but the rest of Pilsen had already gone home by then. Support for the national team has declined. What's it like at club level? Today, a club from the capital is the main force. Slavia Prague, the country's oldest club, is back on the scene. I think Slavia was amazing, like uh, against Barcelona, like, like against Dortmund. They have returned to the Champions League this season after 12 long years of absence. Slavia Prague! Slavia has a Chinese investor, and that helped. We have much more money in here. We have to ukazuje Slavia, která je nadstandardní. A právě i z toho vždycky český národ já dokáže těžit, že tu kostru postaví na těch klukách, který v tom ročníku dominují. Letos je to Slavia a přenes to vlastně i na půdu reprezentace. Players like Tomáš Soček, Lukáš Mazopust or Jan Borgil. They know each other from the club and take their game also to the national team. But Slavia was the only Czech team to play internationally this season. There is more money being pumped into the league, but does that mean that the quality has improved? In the generation we, we talk about from 90s, the players when moved abroad, improved, improved and he brought it to the national team and played very well for the national team. Now, with the bigger salaries here, uh, the players are not so motivated uh, to, to go, uh, go abroad. Former Czech stars played at Juve, Man United or Liverpool. Today's generation at the likes of Hoffenheim, Sevilla or Hertha Berlin. Good clubs, but not the best of the best. And if they play at home, the quality is too low. And there are even more serious issues. Vice chairman of Czech FA, Roman Berber. He's a very controversial man, very unpopular among, among supporters. He's a former uh, member of, uh, member of uh, secret police. So, and he is also a former referee. He created net of another referees and they have a uh, big, uh, big power. So the main feeling is people here in Czech Republic don't trust uh, uh, to Czech football despite promotion uh, or qualification to Euro uh, 2020. Most Czech fans don't believe this will change anytime soon. So does this mean there is no football passion in Czech Republic? This is Ostrava, Czech Republic's third largest city on the border with Poland and Slovakia. The industrial town is the former steel heart of the country. Local team Banik Ostrava has some of Czech Republic's most passionate fans. It is derby time against neighboring rivals Opava. The tension runs high. It is the most important game of the year for both. I met former Bundesliga player and Czech international Václav Svierkos. He's from the region. Banik was his first professional team. At the Euro 2008, he scored the opening goal when Czech Republic beat host Switzerland. So, with Arbeit is always hard here. This is this is naturally better, but free Arbeit is so that that the Arbeit was or that the Geld verdienen was not einfach. Und deswegen, die Leute sind hier, diese Region ist ganz hart und die hassen, wir hassen dich nicht, die Leute aus Prag. People here don't care too much about the quality of the league or allegations of corruption. They keep the passion for football alive no matter what. Panik is the home of former star Milan Baros and of goalkeeper Jirji Pavlenka. This is the national team's strongest position. Pavlenka, Tomasz Watzlik from Sevilla, Slavia's Andrzej Kolar and, to make it four, Augsburg's Tomasz Kobeck. Wer glaubst du, im Section Team kann so ein bisschen der Leader sein, der, der Spieler, der sich jetzt vortut, 2020 bei dem Turnier? Also, ich glaube schon, der Patrick Schick, der gerade bei Leipzig spielt. Patrick Schick is a highly rated talent, probably the biggest asset of the Czech team. Czech team really need uh, uh, Patrick Schick 
to be to be fully fit, to be ready to be in form for the European uh, Championship. And what about Alex Kral, the Czech hair brother of David Luiz? The defensive midfielder was instrumental for the win against Kosovo. Tak já si myslím, že určitě Alex Kral má potenciál do budoucna se stát lídrem. Je to dneska stále velice mladý hráč, který, který teď přestoupil do, do Moskvy. Finally, there are two Bundesliga players who already played at Euro 2016. Vladimir Darida from Hertha Berlin and Pavel Kadazabek from Hoffenheim. Já jeden, který ze generace on hat schon Potenzial und wir haben lange zusammen gespielt. Ich muss sagen, dass wir sehr gute Mannschaft haben und gute Gegner für für starke Mannschaft wie Deutschland ist oder England und so. So what can Czech Republic achieve at Euro 2020? <laughs> we hope they will go, they will, they, will, they will continue after the group, we hope. Maybe quarterfinal is maximum from my point of view, not, not, not more. I think we're not going to be in a final, to be honest, but I hope we will get from the group to playoffs. We're giving gas and man sieht was was kommt. Definitely we will win. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Learning Czech, lesson one. Good luck, Czech Republic. Hodně štěstí, Česko. Hodně. Hodně štěstí, Česko. I mean it. Ende, oder?